Hello, welcome to Light at Speed. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how having your own spectrometer, CRI meter, and even flicker meter doesn't have to break the bank. Welcome to a pretty new Light at Speed environment. This is the video studio for precision lighting, remote controlled lighting, and Lumini in London. Today, I'm going to be showing you something that I don't think you've ever seen before. A spectrometer that also measures CRI, color temperature, and flicker that won't break the bank. Now, if you're familiar with these things, you might be familiar with products such as this. The very formidable Konica Minolta CL200A. This cost us about two and a half thousand pounds a few years ago, but highly accurate, calibrated, and will measure color temperature and chromacity very accurately. Take a step up, you have the Konica Minolta CL500, and this, as the name suggests, was a little bit more money because it's got more numbers, and this was about five and a half thousand pounds when we bought it. And once again, incredibly accurate. But you won't want to carry one of these around in your bag all the time. But I like to have gadgets. I'm a gadget man. I want to have something in my bag that I can carry around that's going to measure accurately, but I don't want to spend this kind of money. So what are my choices? There aren't many until I came across something on AliExpress. Not a website I frequently go to, but when you find something like this, maybe I should go to there more. This is a little box. And this is a box called an Opel Lightmaster Pro. They make a couple of these. This is the Pro version, and that QR code will take you to the app, either on the App Store or the Google Play Store. And if you look on the side there, it'll show you that with this device, apparently, you can measure lux level, flicker, color temperature, and CRI. Let's have a look what you get in the box. First thing I see is a rather lovely bag with opal.com on it. And then the device itself. On the bottom, you'll see a, a micro USB port and a little reset button, which hopefully you'll never need to press. On the front, it says Lightmaster. It doesn't suggest that it's the pro version, but this one is the pro version. And to turn it on, you just press it out. There's a little light on the top, which flashes to tell you it's got power and it's on. And then if you take your phone, if you tap on Lightmaster Pro on your phone and you've already connected it, you can press start. It'll connect to the Lightmaster Pro. And in this case, it's showing you that the color temperature where it's sitting is 3,757 Kelvin with a CRI of almost 98. And the Lux level is 648 Lux. If I swipe over to the left, I also have the chromacity chart. So I can get an XY plot or a UV plot. I can see that it's sitting just below the black body line. And the only lights in this space at the moment are my fabulous video lights. Then if I click on flicker, I get the flicker chart with frequency over modulation percentage. And if I hit start, it's going to measure the frequency and modulation percentage. And in this case, it pops up a little green circle well and truly in the no risk zone. And if I click on raw data, it shows me a plot of frequency uh, over modulation, which is pretty cool. But for something that costs $30, how accurate is it when compared to products that cost two and a half thousand or five and a half thousand pounds? I think that's the key here. It's very nice because you know, I can get an app on my phone, which apparently measures Lux, but how accurate is it? In my experience, very inaccurate. But what if you can get a photometer like this for $30 that actually does what you think it should do? So I'm going to do a few tests now using the gold standard of spectrometers, the Konica Minolta pair, and I'm going to compare it against this. Let's see how accurate it can be. My first test is just going to use the two studio lights that I have here. You can see that the Konica Minolta is reading 3073 Kelvin. When I compare it with the Opal Lightmaster Pro, it's reading 3600 and 80 Kelvin. Pretty close. The next test is going to be for CRI. For that, I'm going to use the CL500, which measures all 15 CRI points. 97 CRI, pretty fair. 
This will give me all the CRI numbers too, from one to 15. What about if I take the Lightmaster Pro? What is it gonna give me? 97.9, okay? And if I move it around a little bit, you can get it to change to 98, but pretty close. And we don't have a decimal point on the Conic Minolta, so maybe it was 97.4, for example. Pretty impressive so far. How about light level? I'm gonna point the CL200 back at that video light again. That reads 711 lux. And this reads 805. Okay, a little bit different. So that's a good start. We've got a baseline and actually it's quite accurate so far. And for $30 already, I think it's a fantastic tool that everyone should have. Next, I'm gonna use the flicker tester and I've got up to the right of me here, just out of shot, a very old LED spotlight that uses a phase triac dimmer. Let's see how that performs. Now you can already see on the camera here that there is some stroboscopic effects. That's because this is a partially dimmed LED driven by phase dimming. This is a great excuse also as to why you don't really want to use phase dimming. Always try and avoid phase dimming at all costs. But how bad is it? Well, it's using this flicker meter, which I cannot do on the Konica Minolta's, which are vastly more expensive. I'm going to go over to flicker and I'm going to click start and this is going to read the raw data of that fitting. Well, there's some interesting stuff going on there. But you can see that we're in high risk territory here. We have a flicker index of 0.2376, a modulation depth of 93.36 and a frequency of 100 Hertz, which is what you'd expect because we're in the UK, the frequency is 50 Hertz and we're doubling the frequency because it's AC, 100 Hertz. That's quite useful. And I think that would be very useful to show a client maybe why you shouldn't be using phase dimming and why you should be using something like zero to 10 or Dali with a really nice quality driver, maybe from Elderled. I have another spotlight here too. I'm gonna to take my remote, turn off the old, and turn on the new. Oh, that's nice and warm. Oh, wow, okay, how warm is it? It's so warm, the Conic Minolta cannot even read it. Now I know this is 2200 Kelvin. Let's see if my Lightmaster Pro can read it. 2,115 Kelvin, pretty nice. Let's see if the CL500 can read it. First off, it gives us a CRI of 89. This is saying it's a CRI of 98.2. So that is definitely a difference. And you have to trust the Konica. So CRI of 89, and this is when it's at 2,200 Kelvin, which is astonishingly good. You know, I'm definitely not knocking it, but it's not 97.5, so there is an issue there. The color temperature though is remarkably accurate. This read 2,141, whereas the Lightmaster Pro reads 2,111. Highly accurate. So the CRI isn't quite accurate. What about flicker? We go to flicker, hit start. We can see we're at no risk. And that's with a modern DRX1 with its color tuning LED module inside it. And the raw data shows us, yeah, a lovely, very quick, low amplitude change. Going back to the risk assessment, you can see the frequency is 733 Hertz, well and truly in the clear. And if this was a static white product of ours, the frequency will be well over a thousand Hertz. Pretty cool. Hello and welcome back. The last test we're going to do is on two Solo 16 Plus fittings. This fitting with the Black Snoot is a Solo 16 Plus with a static white color. This fitting is a Solo 16 Plus with a color tuning chip from Luminous. I'm going to cover the tuner first. 
So all we're dealing with is this static white. First, I'm going to use the Konica Minolta CL200, which will just give me a color temperature. The color temperature is 2732. Next, we're going to use the Lightmaster Pro. We were looking on the Konica Minolta at 2732. This is giving us 2726. So it seems that the color temperature is really, really accurate. It's also saying that the CRI of this fitting is 97.3. Now we know if we do the same measurement on the highly reputable CL500, that we expect it to be slightly lower. The color temperature is bang on. No complaints with the color temperature. CRI is 97, whoa. So that is amazing. Really high CRI, <laughs> like I'm surprised. It's a Solo 16 Plus. Over a thousand lumens, beautiful fitting, very simple design. And that snoot, remember, is about the same size as a Coke can. This is a Solo 16 Plus with a color tuning chip and beautiful optic from Luminous. First, we'll use the CL200 to measure the color temperature. Currently set to 3100. We know this is gonna be fairly accurate. 3150 on the Lightmaster Pro. What about CRI? CRI on the Lightmaster Pro, 91 point, oh, 92, 94, 92.4. CL500, remember a five and a half thousand pound tool, 91. So actually really quite accurate. What if we play a little bit with it so here we are, 3,150. I'm gonna press the warming Dali control button and I can see it warming up beautifully. And you can see the color temperature dropping and dropping and dropping, still coming down. There we are, 1,800 Kelvin. And it seems like this sensor and that they're using the Lightmaster Pro seems to love warm light because it's now given it a CRI of 100, which we know is not accurate. But color temperature, bang on. We'll now use the CL500. CRI is 96, wow. This is probably the best color tuning spotlight I've ever seen for CRI and for beautiful color. Um, really, really impressive. What about flicker then? The only one we can use for a flicker test is indeed the Lightmaster Pro. I'm gonna hit start. And we're in the no risk zone, frequency of 300 Hertz. This actually uses an elder led driver and the raw data is showing us that 300 Hertz with minimal amplitude. So flicker is quite interesting. And I'm sure I'm gonna do another video on flicker, but it depends on the frequency, how quickly the light is being turned on and off, and the difference between its on and off states, how big a gap that is. And if you can increase the frequency and reduce the amplitude gap, you have a much lower flicker product. Let's get some lights back on. So, thank you very much for watching. In conclusion then, I think that the Oppo Lightmaster Pro is actually a very useful tool, as long as you know that it measures warm lights with a higher CRI than they actually are, the color temperature, highly accurate. The lux level, surprisingly, pretty accurate. I'm very impressed. And remember, it's the only one of these that can measure flicker. And I know from personal experience that people are still asking for phase dimming products. I don't think that's very good. And this product will hopefully enable you to be able to explain why. There you have it. It gets my recommendation. And maybe I will do a giveaway very soon. Take care. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Take care. Bye bye.